All right, so Deadpool and Wolverine is officially a week old, and it's time to see if this movie is as good or bad from the first watch. And before we get started, I'm just going to say this. No, this movie did not save the MCU, and it was never designed to. This movie is meant to tell a story totally separate from the MCU, and pretty much just makes fun of Disney and Marvel. But this movie showed Marvel the recipe to make a blockbuster in the year 2024. And if I'm being honest, and I'm sure I'm not alone in this, this movie made me care more about this Deadpool Wolverine universe way more than the current MCU. But in my review of this movie, I said that I thought this movie was a strong 8.5 to maybe even a 9, and I compared it to Guardians 3 because I love both movies, but for completely different reasons. Guardians 3 has a way better story than Deadpool Wolverine, however, uh, Deadpool Wolverine is just so much more fun, and the rewatchable element is so much higher, which personally is, is important to me. If a movie is fun and engages me, that makes up for a lot of plot holes, like for example, Endgame and the Venom movies, and now Deadpool Wolverine. We all know how fun this movie is, and the majority of reviews are positive, including mine, but let's get into some of the issues I have for this movie, and uh, don't worry, it's not that many, because this movie is great. Alright, so the most blatant issue I have is the timeline confusion, and I know I'm definitely not alone in this one. In this movie, it is revealed that Logan took place in the same universe as the Deadpool movies, and it's also been known that Logan takes place in 2029, which is five years after the new timeline that was created in X-Men Days of Future Past. And in case you have not seen that movie, basically in the distant future, uh, in the Fox universe, the humans created Sentinels, which were robots able to replicate the abilities of mutants, and they wiped out all of the mutants except for Wolverine, Magneto, Professor X, uh, Kitty Pryde, and I'm sure I'm forgetting others, but uh, Kitty Pryde sends Wolverine back in time to stop uh, the mutant apocalypse from taking place, and this results in the creation of a new timeline. X-Men First Class, Apocalypse, and Dark Phoenix are all taking place in the past of this new timeline. And the current year of this new timeline is, I believe, 2024. So the mutants only had uh, five years of peace until they were uh, eventually killed off by the humans once again in the Logan film. So what makes things confusing is that after Deadpool gets rejected by Happy Hogan in 2018 in the 616 universe, he goes back in, uh, in time to 2024 of the Fox universe, which is where Deadpool, uh, the Deadpool movies take place. So by this logic, Logan and the X-Men should still be alive, so there would be no need for his universe to die because it hasn't lost its anchor in Logan unless his universe somehow, you know, knows Logan is dying in only five years, so perhaps it's already unraveling since it's happening soon. But I don't know, that is never mentioned in this movie, uh, so it doesn't really make sense, but as I said earlier, I don't really care because this movie is so much fun and I can't forgive its faults. Another problem I have is that there was simply not enough X-Men in this movie, and I think I know why, it's because there is a great chance we see Avengers vs. X-Men in Avengers Doomsday, and I have a video called what um, Phase 6 for the MCU should be, where I basically make my own lineup for what I think should happen next, uh, so make sure to go check that video out, but basically, I believe in Avengers Doomsday, it will be pretty much an Avengers vs. X-Men movie, due to Doctor Doom causing incursions so that he can see um, you know, which universe is uh, worthy of joining Battleworld. But anyways, I do believe that's why we didn't get, get much X-Men in this movie. Uh, but I specifically wish we got to see James Marsden as Cyclops, uh, Professor X of course, and a Halle Berry Storm cameo. James Marsden Cyclops was done absolutely dirty in X-Men Last Stand as he was killed off screen, which is a shame because he's the main X-Men besides Wolverine. And I actually do understand why we did not see Professor X because we just saw him die in Multiverse of Madness. And if he was going to be in this movie, it'd be because we'd see uh, Cassandra Nova kill him, so yeah. And uh, a Halle Berry uh, Storm would just be been cool to see. Uh, although Blade, Elektra, and Gambit all had good screen time and made uh, the most of it, the cameo that got done the dirtiest was Laura. Laura barely got any screen time uh, or dialogue, but I did like it when um, they had her put on the glasses she stole from the gas station in Logan before the final battle in the void. And I almost forgot, it wasn't just Hervey got done dirty, it was also the Juggernaut. He did not get a single word of dialogue and I don't know, that just hurt my heart. Like they literally could have just had uh, Ryan Reynolds play him since uh, he voiced Juggernaut in Deadpool 2 and uh, you don't really see his face because how big his helmet is. Uh, but the last dislike I have of this movie is a pretty important one, uh, Wade and Vanessa's breakup. The explanation of their breakup was rush bad. And we only saw the breakup through the memories accessed by Cassandra Nova when she touched Deadpool. And I mean, that's all we got is an explanation of their breakup. Uh, Wade just, you know, he just felt bad after being rejected by the Avengers and just pushed her away. 
Um, and it's a big letdown as their, their relationship is so important and crucial in the first uh, two Deadpool movies. So yeah, those are my only dislikes for this movie. And let's get into some things I uh, liked and have aged well in this movie. Uh, Hugh Jackman's performance is perfect and this Wolverine has elements of all the past ones we've seen. He has quick-witted humor like we saw in the early X-Men movies. Um, he's very blunt and brutal and also caring uh, like we see in the Logan movies. So he's kind of a jack of all trades. Uh, a trait we see for the first time is a sense of sarcasm. But his brutal and honest roast of Deadpool in the car scene was fantastic. And you can see the pain exuding from um, Deadpool even with the mask on. And speaking of great performances, uh, the cameos in this movie uh, were not only really cool but played perfectly. Uh, Chris Evans' Johnny Storm was fantastic, no pun intended, and the two characters that stole the show were Channing Tatum's Gambit and Wesley Snipes' Blade. Uh, Wesley Snipes has definitely not lost it one bit, and uh, he had one of the best lines in the movie. There will never be another Blade. Like, that is a burn to the current uh, Blade movie that's being worked on by Marvel, uh, and it's probably never going to happen. They've gone through so many writers, uh, directors, and there's not a writer or director for this movie so far, so... Uh, and it was supposed to come out like this year or last year, so yeah, it's not looking good for the Blade movie. And Channing Tatum's Gambit was one of the funniest parts of the movie um, with his, you know, dialect, but I really enjoyed the action sequences uh, with uh, Gambit. It was really awesome to see. I also really dug the Marvel disses in this movie. The Blade one was good, but I actually really enjoyed how they used Nice Pool as symbolism for, you know, the brain dead Marvel stands that believe everything since Endgame has just been perfect. Uh, and Deadpool also told Wolverine that he was joining the MCU at a low point. And I love how Ryan is just able to sneak these disses in there. And uh, it's, it's some pretty slick stuff. But we all knew Deadpool Wolverine being together in this movie would produce fireworks. But this movie produced a beautiful nuke in the sky. These two actually delivered and made a buddy comedy. And it's just perfect. And I need to see these two together again. But in my opinion, Deadpool Wolverine has aged well. And once it comes out on Disney+, Plus, I'm going to watch this movie an unhealthy amount of times while i'm doing dishes laundry homework you name it so in my review i believe i gave this movie an eight and a half and that rating will stand deadpool wolverine is an 8.5 out of 10 for me it's not a perfect movie but it was never meant to be it was meant to bring these two icons together and have some fun while honoring uh, the fox universe of marvel but marvel this is your blueprint for making your comeback so don't ignore it but hey i'm just a kid and this is my opinion All right. Why are you staring at me? I don't know. <laughs> you can't do it and then pause and stare at me. All right, I got this. I got this. Oh, oh, oh.